Thank you. All right, so excited to be here with you all for this last live stream for this journal. Um, and I'm really excited to see your journals when we share at the end. Um, we've seen some peaks on social media and on Mix, and I'm excited to see um, how things have been coming along. So um, as you know, I've been working in the regular journal that we've been working in all together. I also have uh, another art journal snacks journal that I've been working in alongside. And I have a third journal that's kind of my more personal one. And um, I do also have, if we have time, I'll show you, um, you may have seen this on my personal Instagram, but I made a little book this week that I'm pretty excited about that's gonna be my next art journal. And I'm, uh, if we have time, I'll show you a little tour of that one later. So um, let's go to the camera. All right, so um, first wanted to show how the cover has come along. Um, I was pretty excited about this find for the cover. It's time to celebrate, your reward is inside. <laughs> and um, knowing is half the battle, look in here for a how-to guide, and then there's this little arrow. So I just, um, yeah, I was really pleased with, with how the cover for this journal came along and uh, what it opens into. So um, pretty well filled up. I have some things in here that need a little bit more attention. And I thought I could spend a little bit of time today talking about what we can do when you're getting to the very end of a journal, right? It's pretty full, but we've got these like last couple of pages that need some love and attention. So I thought it would be good to just start with a blank page for our stream today and um, talk some about how that blank page feels towards the end of something, right? We're at the end of this journal. And I know for me, there can be feelings sometimes of, I don't want this journal to end, or sometimes it's, gosh, you know, how many more pages are left in this one? I really want to turn the page on all of the things in this journal and move on to something else, right? So it's just um, an awareness that I've been developing over the decades that I've been doing this is that sometimes there will be things that come up in the journal that you're just like, you know what, I want to be done with this one. So I always like to give you permission to end a journal whenever you want. One one of my books, one time, it had like 10 pages left. And I really wanted to be done with what had started that journal. So the last couple pages, I just did like a doodle all the way through the last couple pages and it went from one page to the next and just kept going and then I wrote the end to the end um so you totally have permission to do that uh and another thing that's kind of a good thing to do at the end of an art journal snacks journal is to kind of go back through your ephemera and see what else is there things you haven't yet used and uh, just put them down and and see what they might bring up so this is a little page from dictionary so this has hammerhead hammerlock hammer toe hammock hamper hampering and uh, a different kind of hamper so for me uh, especially with what Sarah said about spring coming right we have the time change tomorrow uh, I'm thinking about a hammock quite a bit. So I'm going to focus this, this page, at least to begin with, on, on just this word. So you don't have to obliterate the rest of the text. In fact, sometimes it's nice to just have a little bit of it peeking through. And for now, I'm gonna stick with this kind of blue color range. And so I suppose with this blue color range, I could put, <laughs> I could build in the hammerhead shark back in here and have a shark swimming through it. maybe a shark in a hammock. <laughs> uh, this index card had a little bit of yellow, I think it was highlighter on the edge of it. 
And so that I like the way that's kind of just bleeding there. It's, you know, another thing that when you're, when you're art journaling is to just let those things happen, right? It's so much a different practice than, um, you know, working on a formal painting or working on a drawing where you want to try to control some of those things. And in an art journal, you just I hope that you're feeling a lot more permission to experiment with media and uh, just let things happen. Like, look how beautiful this yellow highlighter is now bleeding into the blue and it's kind of spreading a little bit more with the water. And I love when things like that happen and they're unplanned, right? I'm looking on the studio desk here to see what else I have. So we got um, the Cronda Arch pencils in this box. And one of the things I've been playing with with these quite a bit over the course of this journal is, is really playing up the using the side of them to get that nice big graphite line. And one of the things that I love about working in an art journal towards the end of the journaling process in it is you get stuff like this, where that's like a ghost line from another page that you can see that's like an impression into the paper, right? It's debossed a little bit there. And here, well, I'll turn the page back in a minute, but you can see some ink from the previous page coming through. And it's like those little reminders that this has been a whole process creating this book. And the pages start to flow one page into the other in this really nice way. These almost look like bubbles now, maybe. I'm also kind of enjoying the, the exact definition of hammock that's given in this dictionary, which is a swinging couch hung by cords at each end, which is not at all how I would describe a hammock. <laughs> I mean, it sounds comfortable, but um, I don't know that I would call it a swinging couch, but it does make me want to now look for like a, maybe a furniture catalog and get a couch and make it into a little swing on here. <laughs> So I think I, I might have to do that. I have some furniture collage images on another art journal page, so I might get those out. Okay, so this is now pretty wet, this page. And I think what I'm gonna do is, is go back a page. So these are the dots. And some of you may have seen what I posted on mix of this. These are actually the little black rubber bits that were protecting the end of the click art pens. And I glued them onto a cap of a drink and then let it sit. And then I made it into this wonderful little stamp. And I'm really, really excited about having these little circles that I can stamp in different places. So on this page, I think add a couple I'm going through some of the other ephemera that I have here left over looking for things that seem to be in the right family and so this is from some packaging and I just folded it over but color wise it looks really good with with this let's take these other parts away so with text um sometimes I spend a lot of time looking and reading like book text and picking out just the right words in it. And then sometimes I let that text just be the texture that is in the background of something else. And in the the joy and the heartbreak of mixed media art journaling is sometimes you have to cover up one thing in order to add something else on. 
And this is pretty good. This glue stick from this box lasted all the way to today. <laughs> I can get, I think, a couple more bits of glue out of there before I move on to the other one. And I told someone to remind me to tell you all about my glue stick story. So uh, I'll pause here for a second and tell that. So when I worked at the state hospital, this was a, a hot commodity, the glue stick, because uh, they weren't allowed other kinds of glue, but they were allowed glue stick. And they got two glue sticks a month for a unit of 50 guys. So two glue sticks a month is not very much. And what they would do is first day of the month, they knew we would restocked the glue sticks and they would come and check it out and they would roll it all the way out, break it off, put it in a little piece of plastic, turn it back in. because They had to check in and check out materials. They would turn it back in empty. And meanwhile, they had a plastic bag with the whole glue stick in it and the whole glue stick to themselves. Interesting uh, forensic glue stick story. <laughs> um, so don't do that. Did not make them popular people. And uh, it was a good day when we solved the mystery of why that was happening. Um, So the words that just stood out to me here as I glanced down at the page was that supposed norm, yet while the difficulties in the way. And this had to be done. It was being. And I was thinking about and kind of having some conversations about how do we use an art journal to express difficult things that are happening. And sometimes we can do that with words, and sometimes we can do that with imagery. So just kind of thinking about the posture of difficulties. And to me, that's kind of like hanging your head a little bit. Although this also looks maybe a little tender with that cocked head so it's kind of a little tenderness towards difficulty maybe <laughs> it's such a nice rich black that we can get with these so you can vary the intensity of the pigmentation by varying the brusher of the brush like letting it get kind of washy in some other areas. So even though this text is about art education, it really can be about whatever, whatever feels real and alive for you or true for you or relevant for you. So with that, something more abstract like this, one of the things that's important to know is like, when do I stop, right? Just to kind of leave the, quiet nature of this, right? And kind of walk away from it with your brush a little. <laughs> And then another thing that I think about if I'm making a page that's maybe about something a little more difficult or feels heavy is like, how can I make the page itself feel heavy, right? And so for me, a lot of times that's like weighting it down. Making it kind of darker, heavier down here at the bottom.
interesting because this page of the book, some of you might be able to read it about how do you grade art, <laughs> which that's yeah, a contentious topic, right? Like how do you how do you grade something like that that's like a personal expression? And we all have different rubrics that we use. We have rubrics I use as an educator, but I don't it's not about quality, right? It's about process for me. And those were always, when I was in school, those were always the ones that I appreciated that really recognized the importance of the process of making something. And did the person learn something? Did they try something new? Were they adventurous? <laughs> I think, you know, it's an interesting thing to keep in mind when you flip back through your art journal, which we're almost at the at the place where we can do that for this, for this box, right? To kind of look back through to the beginning and don't judge what you've done as good or bad or right or wrong, but like looking at the process of how you filled this book up with your life. Okay, that feels pretty complete to me, like pretty solid down here at the bottom. The face is kind of looking towards the text here that's been highlighted. Um, the colors are coming through and I, I like the way this page looks. So I'm gonna set this one aside and let it dry. All right, so this is the uh, kind of auxiliary art journal that I've been working in for the past two boxes. This is the one that I put the little die into and built that little box inside of it. And I have this project I've been working on. Sarah actually sent me these. These are from some blinds and they're the like extra part that was cut off. Which I don't, were they from samples, Sarah? Or were they from your actual blinds? You'll have to let us know in the chat. But I, I glued them in back here because they perfectly, with this box, there was this area where the book was kind of squishing. So these are actually exactly the right height to kind of support the rest of the book. And then what I've been doing is randomly gluing words and phrases in. And uh, when it's done, I'll put it all together and see if it tells me anything. <laughs> but I'm, I'm most of the way through doing this. I also sprayed some of these with a little bit of glittery stuff and got a little ways left to go. And I've got some other words and phrases ready for this other one. So getting there. Yeah, cut off ends from paper shades. So um, that's that's kind of part of the project of this book. And then I have, you know, some other pages in here. Some of you have seen these, some of these pages happen. It's kind of got this book because it's my extra one. I've been kind of bouncing around in here. So just put that one on mix the other day. This is another thing that you might come across in your art journal as you're coming towards the close, a page where you've like, put some media and you're not really sure, like, is this, is this done? How do I know? Right? How do I know if something's done? And so it's just, you know, another opportunity to kind of look through and see what other ephemera do I have around odds and ends that kind of go or match color wise. And this was one that was just sitting in my little, my little box of scraps. And as I set it down here, this this is actually where there was a fold, but I kind of like the way it looks that way. So I think what I'll do is glue that folded over part flat before I glue it in, which is the perfect job for this end of this glue stick. Be a bit from a calendar. <laughs> And because I'm not currently a patient at the state hospital, I have more than one glue stick around. <laughs> boxes and boxes of them, a wealth of glue sticks. It is pretty inventive though, right? Like, I mean, one of the things I learned from working in that setting is like how 
incredibly motivated people can be to be creative and the things that they will do that are you know sometimes in interpreted as nefarious but you know I think we all have had that experience of I just really need to create something right and so that desire to create is strong which is what I wrote about when I wrote about that story in an article about art supplies and like how we think about the art supplies that we provide. But, you know, you could see that as stealing or preventing other people from having the glue sticks, or you could see it as like, I really want to create. <laughs> okay. So I like the way that looks and I didn't even plan this, but it's got this nice arch going from the green here into this other one. And uh, this is why sometimes I like to just work fast because you never know like what interesting things might just might just happen. So giving yourself permission to just enjoy making marks and seeing what happens. Filling up spaces with texture. I think I like to make these little X shapes like this because I also really like to stitch, uh, like cross stitch stitches like this, an embroidery thing. Just kind of a, a texture that feels satisfying to me. We'll leave that white area up there. So if you are a planner and you really like to plan your pages out, I really encourage you to kind of every time you sit down to journal, maybe you do a page that's a little bit more structured, a little more planned, and then give yourself the gift of just enjoying making marks. and then not getting so attached to them that you can't kind of brush them away a little bit. The green that's on here is, uh, there's some watercolor ink and then there's also like a, a kind of sparkly drawing ink. You can see that it separates a little bit here. And I've found that re-wetting it is, is just very satisfying. Is it? changes it moves in a in a very different way when you re-wet it versus when it originally dries So this is kind of an example of that. This is where I had put some of that ink on there and then there were some splatters that happened from a, working on a different page. And I just look, I really enjoy that. And um, when I look at a page like this, it's hard to think about like, oh gosh, do I want to add anything to it? I mean, these white pieces, of these are watercolor paper and it feels like I do, but I also don't want to mess with this because it's this interesting thing that has happened here where I've seen what I think the book just got wet maybe <laughs> um so you know if you're if you're hesitating and hesitating it's okay to just turn the page and and maybe move on to a different page and come back to that one later so you should let us know in the chat if you've been working on your journals sequentially or if you've been flipping around I tend to do, if I'm doing like a travel journal, I tend to be a little bit more sequential with those. And then with my just regular art journals, I'm a lot more, um, I think, cause I like to work on multiple pages at once. I do like to kind of move around quite a bit. This page has this big kind of gray, it was from a magazine, it was like a smoke page. And um, 
just can add a bunch of graphite on here. So this is the giant version of the pencils we got in this box. So it's exactly the same stuff, just in a really big block form, which is something that I like to think about when I think about supplementing the materials from the box with other materials is like what what is in the same family, what kind of can speak the same language, but maybe louder or softer. And so this is very loud <laughs> because it's so big, right? And the other thing I've been enjoying doing with it is just um, writing big letters. I find um, sometimes words that you didn't intend come out, right? When you write really big, the whole page with a word. to the smaller one and just add some more line work into that. Yes, water soluble. Same, it, so it's exactly the same as the pencils. It's just in a giant stick form. This is a 3B, the 3B one. Um, yeah, same same stuff, just giant. <laughs> it's heavy too. So this has something really lovely happening here in the spine where this is green ink from another page that's coming through here where the stitches are. I, I just love that so much. It's one of the things about journaling in a sewn spine journal that is probably my favorite. And whether that's sewn with a machine like these ones are or hands, <clears throat> hand sewn. Just kind of peeking from one page to another, right? And you can accentuate that more. And maybe I'll show that sometime with like really, really saturating things into the gutter of the book so that you start each page with a line that comes down with interesting pigments. So I'm gonna, this page might need something else, but for right now, I'm gonna let it be. This is another page that started with just like, let me just use up some gold gesso that I was using for something else and then this magazine page that seemed to be in conversation. I'm not really sure what else might happen with that page. Um, I wanted to show something else that you can do in your art journal. Um, this is a newspaper article that actually is an interview <laughs> that a local paper did with me. And um, there's me. Uh, <laughs> and I uh, just wanted to just include it in here because it happened during the space of time that this journal was happening and I made it so that it could fold up and fit nicely here inside. I wrote a little message to myself about the importance of, of what was said in that article, which is about, uh, long story short, they uh, they asked some questions that I felt like were very ageist. And so I responded in a way that uh, challenged that. And the best thing happened, which was they totally took that and understood that what they had asked originally was not great. <laughs> so it felt, uh, it felt very powerful in a good way. So 
and because of that, I think I'm just thinking about like how you might use symbols in your journal to kind of symbolize like here's a bunch of text. This is something important that happened. And how might I symbolize that with something very simple and graphic? So you all know and have seen that I use a lot of words in my journals, but sometimes it's nice to think about if I didn't use words, what would I do to communicate this idea, right? this idea of like growth? There's actually a couple different types of newspaper pages I'm gonna show. Oh, I see the question of how did I create the hole? It's actually a, a hole punch, like a, a punch. And I mostly tried to line it up a little bit off in some spots, especially as the journal gets more full, I discovered. So um, originally it fit perfectly so that the little dice with number five would perfectly fit, but of course now that the journal's very full, it doesn't quite line up, but it's still, it's still fun. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed making the most of the intensity of color with these in this journal. Um, you know, I've had materials like this in my studio and part of my journaling practice before, but just really spending time with these bright colors, especially in winter. Sarah and I were talking about all the rain this year all over the place and just the dreariness and it's very gray here today, a little bit of sun, but um, having these nice bright colors, it's like this winter antidote for yourself, right? Sometimes if you're really, really having a hard time with a very stormy day and you can't go out and do the things you want to do, working in your art journal with really bright colors is a, a lovely way to counteract that for yourself. Right? So what I see now on this page that's working well is like the color balance and then the dark black here that's actually coming over from the previous page and the little peak of the black here. I think I want one more dark element like that. And I'm just gonna check before and after that I can do this. That's what I'm gonna do around my little hole. And I'm doing this knowing that this very intense black ink will definitely go through to the next page and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> I feel like I want more, I want more dots. You have to be careful with big, thick things like that if you're anywhere near newsprint, because if it touched the newsprint, it would like, bleed against those fibers. I'm just gonna give that a moment to dry. I'll set that aside for the time being. Yeah. Come back to this page, that page feels pretty done. This page is very wet, so I'm gonna give it a little more time to dry. And come to one more page here. And I wanted to show, um, this is not ephemera hour, but I have some fun ephemera here. These were, so I don't know if this was an adaptation. And I've used the fork for art materials, but the knife would also be good for spreading art materials. And so with the spoon, so 
I'll keep these in the studio or give them to Sammy to chew up. She also might like that. But I just, I love the simplicity of the lines on these. They're just like so very plain. And um, I thought they would be really fun to just glue into a journal. Because I had um, another piece of ephemera that was in the last little ephemera envelope. I got this one that said, that has meals and it says breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so there's this like sense of having three things and then having three pieces of silverware here. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to stick these guys in. And I'm just gonna glue them this way. So they're gonna be a little crinkly. And um, they'll go a long way towards making that very satisfying thick journal, right? <laughs> I mean, the other thing you could do, and maybe I'll do this with the spoon one, is open it all the way up and then you have more of that brown paper. And I'm offsetting them so I get the jagged edge in one place there. Let me bring them up. This is also kind of one of those, you can't put that in an art journal moments, right? Where it's like, really? The wrappers from disposable, eco-friendly silverware? Sure, why not, right? Because it's, you know, it, it, it takes on whatever narrative you want to give it. So uh, chopstick wrappers are also really fun. A lot of times they have interesting text on them interesting marks, symbols. I mean, the, the silverware is so flat, you could almost stick it in there, which I might do. Don't tell Sammy, she almost got something to chew on, but I took it away from her. Okay, so where did that little... Oh, there it is, okay. one thing that probably you've learned about art journaling is it's not really good in a windy spot because <laughs> these little bits of ephemera can go flying it can be done but so i'm not one for logging meals. I know that's something that some people do, but um, you might think about like where or with whom you have your meals. So I have breakfast with, I have breakfast with the parrot. Um, unfortunately, right now I have lunch at my desk. I need to change that. <laughs> and then I have dinner uh, usually with the parrots also. And that's uh, kind of been a nice thing about the recent moving in my life is having breakfast and coffee with the parrots again. That had been my practice for a really long time, but uh, then when I started paddling every morning, I wouldn't be here for coffee and breakfast. I would eat that in the car on the way to the water. So I think they've really enjoyed that return to just having the quiet morning, drinking coffee with me. They don't drink coffee, but Griffin eats like the ends of apples or lately I've been giving them frozen blueberries which is pretty funny to watch them eat. So this page I think wants a lot more green on it just because of the nice green lines of the silverware. So I'm just gonna have some green lines going across here.
Hey, Aaron, just jumping in here real quick. We're about halfway through class, which flew by. No. <laughs> so I just thought I'd give you an update. Great, thank you. And I see there's a question. So I'm just gonna get this really wet and then maybe we can answer the question while it is drying. Okay. Why don't we answer the question and then I'll let this dry for a little bit. All right. Um, so Darla Joe, if you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask your question, go right ahead. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'm in the process of kind of completing a, um, uh, a date book, a date planner uh, that I'm making into a um, a journal, and I um, have an abstract that I cut out. It's a canvas. Mm -hmm. and, um, I wanted to do something fun for the cover, but I'm doubting whether or not that really would be safe for the artwork. I mean, it does have a coating of, um, you know. Um, What's the word? Um, yeah, it escaped me. Whatever you do, you put on top of artwork when it's done. Um, so it does have that, but um, I'm thinking, do you have a recommendation? Because I see that you decorate your the, the covers of your journals. Um, should I put this on the inside flat, in your opinion? Or do you think it would be safe to put on the outside? And if I do put it on the outside, are you thinking, um, you know, like I, I've got this stuff I use for collage. It's a heavy gel gloss. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you would recommend? Or can you give me some advice? Yeah, really great question. I think it's a good thing to bring up here as the at the end of the journal. Um, you know, some people do their covers at the beginning and decorate their covers before we start. Some people start do it at the end. I kind of do a little bit of both. Um, so some things to think about. If you're still working in the journal, if you put something with a gloss on the front cover and then you have it open and you're working on it, it's very likely that that gloss is gonna stick to whatever's underneath your journal, especially if you're using something like um, uh, you know, paper or something else that's protecting your workspace. So gloss is really a good thing to apply when you're done. But the other you know, caveat I'll have for that is that a gloss, if you shelve your journals next to each other, then that journal might stick to the, to the back of the one before it. Um, I've definitely opened up some of my storage boxes of journals and had to kind of pry them apart from each other because one had Mod Podge and another had gloss medium and they were together in a box with you know temperature changes. Um, and, and so you just want to be careful about that. Um, inside front cover is also, you know, a cool spot. Um, the thing to know about that, though, is, again, if you're still working in the journal, there'll be like some rubbing that will happen. And so it might cause whatever's on this page to, to transfer onto the art. So, you know, another thing that you could do is put it on the cover and then do like a, um, like a clear transparency sheet or a, like a, a paper protector right like stuff you can get from the office supply store and you could actually cut that to be the size of your journal and like blanket stitch around the edge or hot glue around the edge frankly to to just protect that that image for the cover so those are some of my initial thoughts about that okay all right so the varnish that's already uh protecting 
the artwork, um, do you think, in your opinion, if if I do decide to put it at least on the inside, that that would be good enough? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if I put it on the outside, um, just, just think just about be aware of the tackiness of it. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't think about the uh, album sticking together. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. All right. Oh, yeah. Somebody says I could always make a photocopy of the artwork. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be basically putting on the paper. Well, I already cut it out. It's canvas. So it's yeah. a little bit too late for that. But that's a good idea. Oh, good idea. Shelly also said, or the plastic that the journal came in. Yeah, there you go. Good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Crowdsourcing ideas. <laughs> All right. So um, as you can see, I closed this page while we were working on it. And I'm, I'm really kind of like the way that's happening. I think I'm going to let this be. And what I might end up doing is going in with like a really opaque acrylic and painting this upper part, um, doing something else to kind of feel like this page feels a little more finished. All right, so I have this last spread and then this page. And uh, this is the last page of the journal. I've kind of been putting some things here in preparation for it. I loved the inside of this envelope, uh, the pattern here. I've used this in a couple other places. And then I found this text when I was cutting stuff out for the other journal. And I thought, oh, well, that's the perfect phrase for the end of a journal, right? Nothing compares to what's next. And um, I love that so much because it it feels like every time I just sent the ephemera envelopes for the next box this week, mailed them off. And um, I feel like every time when I'm putting them together, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the best set of ephemera yet. <laughs> so um, I feel that way every time. And so I just wanted to, to kind of put this in there as a reminder of that. Um, and also I wanted to work on this page for a bit because I got a request to kind of talk about a little more about kind of what to do with, with difficult stuff in your art journal. And so, um, it, you know, the last page is kind of a good, again, a good place where that kind of thinking can happen, right? Because it's an ending. Um, and we have lots of different endings that can happen in our lives. And um, the last page in your art journal is, Sometimes it's a triumph and sometimes it feels sad, right? So um, I wrote the word ending on here. Uh, this black is a recent uh, addition to my art desk. It's black watercolor ground that you brush on, which kind of blew my mind at the art store and I got super excited to put it into art journals as you know, I'm, I've really enjoyed working on some black watercolor paper that's come in past uh, boxes from Art Snacks. And um, this gives me the opportunity to get some of that same feel. It's very matte, as you can see, it takes uh, water media really lovely and uh, gives an, an interesting opportunity that's different than like brushing some acrylic paint on here. So sometimes uh, thinking about putting a darker color if you're in a darker mood or there's dark stuff going on and, and using the opportunity of just making marks and being in the process of it as a way to, to kind of give yourself space to be with things that are hard. which is something that we don't like to do very often, right? Like we, sometimes we think we want to fast forward through the difficult stuff. I've definitely been in that boat before. And um, it's also something to be said to just be with it, to sit with it for a little bit, right? So the other good thing about doing that in an art journal is you don't have to sit with it for a really long time, right? It's just the space of this page and then I can go on to something else. And I like that this page has kind of the dark ending, but then the excitement of the what's next, right? So as I think about 
what might be under this what's next part. I'm looking at my pile of ephemera, and this is kind of interesting. I think it's a vase, some kind of glassware. But I like the pattern, like the pattern of this next to the pattern of that security envelope. I think that's kind of a neat thing to stick on there. And one more thing I'll say about sitting with difficult things in your art journal is if it starts feeling too heavy, turn the page, right? Turn the page. You'll let a little bit of that wrap over. This little bit and put it here. With this prequel of what's to come on the next page, right? Right. So that can be that can become something fun and leaving myself a little room to play with that. But before we go to um, sharing, I just wanted to do a quick flip through of this book. Here's where we started, the beginning of year two. Some of these will look familiar because we've looked at them together, but they've come a long way since the live streams. I found this on the floor, this tag. And this is, I know we talked about ephemera that you don't pick up. This was something that I did pick up. Little painting of, of Griffin. <laughs> And here's the rest of that security envelope. And this page, I just still haven't figured out what to do. I, I do want to do something to this, so I'm not quite done with this journal because I, I was thinking it might be cool to take a couple of different human figures and then put them on here. And then you can kind of switch the head or switch the middle or switch their feet. But I haven't quite had a moment to do that. And you can see there's some pages in here that feel more done and some pages that need maybe a little more attention than previous live streams. Difficult page. Putting cards in. This one just like this riot of color. It's so, it's so fun to turn to this page, right? Like from one thing that's got some color and then, oh my goodness, look at all this color. And then back into this more feels like winter, this collage. Maybe it's gonna get loud for a minute here. This page has some really fun texture on it. And this one I think needs maybe one more thing, but I, I don't know what yet. Here's this page that we worked on together and the next couple that we've seen. My homework <laughs> in this last page. And then I dated it on the back, but not quite done. So stay tuned. I'll post this one on Mix um, when that one feels more done. And right now let's go to see if people would like to share. And then I have some more things I can show afterwards. But since it's the last live stream of this box, I wanna make sure that if people would like to share some of their favorite pages or um, any of the things that they're especially excited about, ways they've used the ephemera, I would love, love, love to invite you to share. So if you wanna share some of your artwork, feel free to physically raise your hand or um, virtually raise your hand through Zoom. Happy to spotlight you and um, you can unmute yourself. So
also feel free to write some thoughts in the chat. We're checking that out too. Okay, I see Chloe. I'm gonna spotlight you, so feel free to unmute yourself. Hi, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Aaron and everybody. Um, I have a couple pages that I'm happy about. Um, let's see. And I like that we're talking about how to do hard things. Um, this is like one of the ones I did at the beginning of this journal. And I've been kind of, I don't know, just like going through it some of the pages just feel more finished, like you were saying, than others. Um, you guys have seen this one before. Um, I tried to do the cutout thing, but I kind of haven't mastered it. <laughs> I'm still struggling. I'm on the struggle bus of cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, some of them I just want to cover up, though. It's funny. Um, I don't know. They're just like this one's not quite done, but I had so much fun today. I I made this one and I really liked it. Yeah. Though sometimes I feel like I rely on like the like the Joanne and Michael's um, ephemera a little heavy. So I'm trying to like get away and like soften the lines a little bit. It's hard sometimes. So thanks for letting me share. Yeah, and you know I think it's. It's a really important thing to think about. It's like some of those, um, you know, pre-printed ephemera that can be really cool to include, but maybe it feels a little bit like, oh, I lost some authenticity here, right? And the same with like rubber stamps and some of the other things. I see you use the arrow. Uh, that's actually a hand carved stamp that I made that arrow in that first page that you showed. Um, and And, you know, so like whether it's like altering them in some ways or if it's on thicker paper, like, peeling some of it away, pulling it apart, doing some things like you'll see some, um, rec whether it's recognizable logos or recognizable things in my journals, but I try to like take them apart and make them mine. Um, and then the other thing about it is like, it's also kind of fun when you find, when you see in your journal, whether it's like a butterfly that you cut out from an ad or something, and then you see someone else has used that same thing it's this wonderful synchronicity and um, that'll happen a little bit with some of our art journal snacks ephemera, right? Because I make 350 of things. They're not, if, if I've made it, they're not all exactly the same, but they'll have like some similarities. And so seeing how people use things in different ways is so fun. Um, my cousin and I used to have that happen all the time with like random stuff we cut out from the same magazine. And then we would both be looking through our art journals and see that we had used the same thing. Like we'd both like glommed on to like a weird, like a hand from a fashion magazine and like the way it was in a gesture. And we'd both put it into our art journals, not knowing. Um, I love things like that. So yeah, thank you for sharing. Okay, I see a virtual hand up. Jill, if you want to unmute yourself, um, feel free to ask your question or turn your camera on and show us what you want, uh, what you've made, whenever you're ready. Checking in, Jill, are you there? <laughs> Okay, Jill, we will get back to you. Oh, it looks like Jill is not on Zoom anymore. Okay, I will keep an eye out for Jill. Um, you know, I was just thinking of uh, what Chloe was saying about relying on some of the pre-made ephemera from craft stores. Um, and I have a, a tip that I learned recently um, for those of you who are on like Facebook or any like online community groups. Um, there's this group 
I'm pretty sure it's it's countrywide, at least in the US, called Buy Nothing, like Buy Nothing and then the city you live in. Um, so I live in a town called Roslindale. So I'm on the Buy Nothing Roslindale group. And I always feel weird posting, like looking for free things, but I sucked it up and posted that I'm looking for magazines. If anybody has magazines that they don't want to throw away or haven't thrown away yet, I will take it. Um, and I got so many magazines for free and I have so much more new ephemera. So sometimes it's okay to ask um, and to find the, you know, the ephemera in free things. Um, so highly recommend if you've got a Facebook group, buy nothing and then your city, give it a search. You'd be surprised how many people want to offload their newspapers, their magazines, their own like ephemera uh, for you to use for your art. So that's just my two cents for the day. Um, Jill, I see you're back. So feel free to unmute yourself and uh, share what you got. Yeah, sorry about that. My Zoom froze <laughs> right when you that's called okay. on me. I'm like, <laughs> sure, thanks. Um, this week I did something fun with cutouts and little windows. I mean, little cutouts and I have little people in them. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of fun. And then uh, on the back, I wrote a little poem about windows. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's great. Playing with, playing with cutouts. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I just wanted to share. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Love that. Also love the amount of washi tape that was used to tape down the uh, poem. <laughs> Looks great. Love the free uh, the free art snacks washi tape we got. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I'm so glad. Um, anybody else want to share what they've worked on? I'll share a few pages. I don't know how I raise my hand, so... I see you, uh, Shauna. Yep. Um, so let's share a couple of my favorites. Maybe maybe one of my not so favorites. Not my so favorite looking one, but maybe one of my favorites. But so this came from one of your first ones. I was doing it in a hotel room, mm -hmm. watching a replay. But it's kind of copying the same thing. But um, I tend to be kind of um, assertive and direct in the way I communicate. So especially with people I love. So this is over and over again, say the nice thing first, say the nice thing first, say the nice thing first. So it's kind of like that reminder, um, say the nice thing first when you're communicating. So I um, kind of liked that one. And then um, this, the leaf, I really liked that one. I have a whole bunch of leaves I've collected. So I've got that one in, in here as well. And the one thing I've lost both my parents recently, and I feel like I had really complicated relationships with them, but I feel like I'm losing them. So one of the things I wanted to do in this journal was kind of like document them through my, through the five senses, like what I remember of hearing them and seeing them and smelling them. So this was the page. I don't like the way it looks, but I do like what it says. So this is documenting my mom. Um, just the things I remember throughout my childhood with her. And today I was working on my dad's, um, my dad's page. Um, and that's been kind of fun. Um, he was a character, so I started working on his. Um, and then the other one I really liked, I was using, I had that leftover card from the last box. It was the anchor. And so I, I just did my values, right? My values really anchor me to who I am and how I made my decisions. So anchor picture of me and then I kind of documented what our, my values are so it's kind of fun so wow really really wonderful thank you so much for sharing that and I, I really really love that idea of, of documenting your experiences of people through the five senses I'm very interested in in like multi-sensory work and um, it's an area of research that I've been following for a while um so I love that and yeah, it's me want to go out and search for my mom's perfume. Like yeah. I remember oh, yeah. like sensory essay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, now I want to go find that perfume. She wore it was obsession. I'm sure I can still find it, but I so remember it. Now I'm like, it, now I want it. 
put some into the art journal too. Right? Yes, exactly. You open that page, it smells. Yeah. Yep. Like the scratch yep. and sniff art journal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Someone should make a, a thing where you could have like custom scratch and sniff for yourself. They should. They should. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, that's been very therapeutic for me. That's I lost her. Uh, she got cancer right before COVID and I lost her during COVID. But um, that's been a very th therapeutic thing. So it felt like everything was delayed because of COVID. Um, yeah. So that's this that was it's been a very good exercise. So yeah. I appreciate I appreciate yeah. having that tool to do it. So yeah, it's, it's, our journal is a really important place to to hold that for sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, related to the senses, Sarah, could we go back to the studio camera for a sec? Yeah. Because I wanted to show this. So this, um, I created this page while I was teaching in the doctoral program this past weekend. And I was just like flipping through a National Geographic. And I came across, I came across this, which I really liked, right? And it's actually squid. Um, and I was, I just responded to it from the pattern. But then I looked at what was actually on the page and it's this. And so, this is um, uh, Darwin. And then this is how a squid would see Darwin if a squid was looking at him. Like the computer made, <laughs> which is just so bonkers to me. Like that someone at National Geographic went through all of this and then like the, talked with the scientists and figured out like, okay, so here's Darwin. And then here's how a squid would see Darwin, um, which is, just amazing but then it ended up like I was drawn to this magazine page just because of this texture but then it ended up being this whole article about how all different creatures see and how their eyes work mechanically and how that compares to human eyes and um it ended up being this really interesting find um that's related to some research things that I'm that I'm interested in continuing with so I just love this headline um this word was cut out already because these magazines live in a classroom, but it says, if you ask people what animal eyes, I assume that used to say are used for, they'll say same thing as human eyes. That's not true. It's not true at all. And uh, I just, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. And uh, that it kind of was in communication about this idea of the senses and how we can include the senses in our journals. So. So interesting. Yeah, it was a very interesting article. Uh, I have a couple other things. This is, oh, here's a box jellyfish that I put in here from it. And box jellyfish. So this is what they see. And uh, they have two eyes. They have one eye that its only job is to look up and it's bigger. And then their other eye just like looks forward. So it's interesting to think about how that changes how we think about what we see in the world. Yeah. So we have about 20-ish minutes left. Um, Aaron, I'm not sure if you want to continue on to another page and then we'll save like the last five minutes for another show and tell. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay, well, I wanted to share this because um, this side here is from uh, an envelope with some ephemera that was sent to me, but addressed to Sammy. So uh, Sammy, this little Sammy went through the mail. And so then the other day I drew her in the journal um, that I've been working in. So fair warning, if you send me mail, it will become part of my art journal. And um, I wanted to show, since we've been talking about like finishing journals and like how that feels, um, I've got some pages here that are like very close to done. Um, and then I was working in it the other day and I was working on something that felt really intense. And I'd sat down and I was, um, I'd used that watercolor ground again and had worked on this whole page. And it was kind of like about difficult things at work and like when things are going to be done. And so I wrote when, 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 um, just kind of wondering and trying to use some sparkly paints to make me feel better about things. And I was going to write into this speech bubble. And then I went and did something else. And then I came back and realized 
that I had done this whole page upside down in my journal. <laughs> so, so the page as it sits in the journal actually goes this way. And so um, I came back to this page and just wrote perfect in parentheses here, just like kind of a sarcastic perfect to myself, because of course this page about like things not being done at work and feeling frustrated about that. Of course that page would be upside down because of course it would. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, it, it's one of those moments where you could uh, be upset with yourself for doing that, or you could also just kind of think, well, yeah, that's, a, that's, of course, that's how it's going to go, right? So page about being in my office, and then an upside down page. So uh, since we talked about newspapers earlier, I know I've showed this before, but um, a great reason to ask your neighbors for their newspapers when they're done reading them, if you don't subscribe, is uh, to be able to do tape transfers, which is what that is. And I just kind of wanted to get this page ready for almost being done. This has a little map in it, with a little peeled off piece from another page. And there's a little bit of watercolor on here already. And there's a little bit of wax crayon on here already. So this is different than the other page. I'm going to do dark at the top of this page. And the nice thing about doing these tape transfers is if you go over them, they create a nice little resist on the page. Something will go here. I don't know what yet. And then this is a page that could have more done to it, but I think I just kind of like it the way it is. I was doing this the other day, just kind of relaxing at the end of the day and just doing some very fluid paint lines and then coming back in and filling some of those in and it's one of those ones that again was much more about the process of doing it and I really like some of what's happening here where the watercolor is soaking into the paper. Erin quick question uh, yeah. before you move on to that page um, we have a question in the chat can you say a little more about tape transfers what kind of tape? Yeah, so you just, all you need is some scotch tape um, or any kind of tape. I really like the, um, if you can find it, the satin um, packaging or packing, sorry, wrapping tape for like wrapping presents, the kind that kind of disappears. Um, it's got a little bit more of a satin finish to it, so it's not glossy. Uh, and then you take a newspaper. It does actually have to be printed newspaper, so way back when a couple boxes ago when we did the partnership with newspaper club that's not uh like traditionally printed newspaper so it won't transfer but like your local free paper which is what this is from or any other printed newspaper that's printed in the traditional way you can take the piece of tape and you kind of run it through your fingers to take a little bit of the tackiness away and then you lay it down on the text lightly so you don't burnish it down you just lay it over the text and then you peel the tape up and you end up being able to pull up just the pigment of the text. So that's where this came from. And I have another page in here where I did that and show you. So here's another one, the word engulfs. And sometimes what will happen is a little bit of the newspaper comes up or it misses some of the text. But again, it's just like one of those things that's one step removed from what the material actually is, right? But um, allows you to, to put something in in a way that's that's then really interesting. Add a little bit more of this color over the top. And then it'll preserve the page when you use wet media over the top. I have another example here. Um, this is kind of the the difficulty and destruction uh, 
live stream apparently, but this was um, this was my page in response to something that happened uh, when I got home last weekend. Uh, there was a helicopter flying over, um, flying over like right over where I live and then flying over the mountain that's close to me, which is Fitch Mountain. This is what it what it looks like from my house, these big trees going up. And I saw a couple of days later in our free paper, which is where this is from, the police report, which I'd been listening to the police scanner because I didn't know how else to find out what was going on. And uh, it was a person that was in a police chase and then got out of his car. And then he was like, apparently he was out there overnight in this mountain that is pretty close to where I live. Um, so this says helicopter hour long law enforcement gave up the active search helicopter called in. And um, so this page was kind of about listening to the police scanner and then finding out later that that dude out there in the mountain all night, uh, that was a little bit scary. So um, what I enjoy about this page is like the intensity of it, but then there's like this echo of a little bit of alcohol ink coming in from the other page and like some bright colors that are happening here too. So I guess it's a little bit about how even the scary stuff isn't all bad, right? An adventure maybe. Yeah. So tape, tape, tape transfers. And you can see here, like there's a little bit of newspaper that peeled off with the tape, but it's okay. So it's a, it's a fun process. I can, I can show some more about that too at some point. There's more, I voted. So here's my voting ephemera. <laughs> Aaron, do you have a favorite page or a favorite spread? Mm, I know yes, you love all of your spreads, but I'm just curious if you so, are. I mean, probably any of you who have seen any of the things I've posted lately on Mix or Instagram can can guess that this would be my favorite page, but this is definitely my favorite page from this last little bit of journaling. The crow in the speech bubble. I think I started this on one of the live streams and then I finished it. Um, the way I finished it was with, with the heart and the cutout. And then this is um, an extra matte, matte medium, a little bit of red colored pencil on here. And I just, I love the way the color works with this. And then I love the little, the way the little dice comes through on this page. It's just, um, makes me really happy. And there's also a little bit of extra symbolism with this being a five. So um, this page has a lot of meaning and a lot of, um, you know, some grief and also some, uh, some love in this page. So that's my favorite. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So we have about nine minutes left does anybody yeah, else feel like they want to share what they've worked on today or worked on this season i love that we go through seasons in yeah. our journals so that's kind yeah. of nice um okay i see a hand darla joe feel free to unmute yourself i um I think it was during Christmas. My um, husband gave me a big pile of little candy balls, uh, chocolate candy balls and the wrappers. There were gold and blue. Ooh, fun. And I thought, you know, I'm obviously it, it's going to take me a long time to eat them, but I'm, I'm going to save up the wrappers and try to do something interesting. And so I started on like a collage where um, I glued down a whole page of them um, of the gold and then just kind of went over it with some paint and just kind of went with it. Um, it kind of looks like a really funky horse <laughs> or <laughs> maybe a dog with uh, uh, clouds or something up there. And I'll probably keep painting on it. Um, but I did notice that you know, because it's kind of plasticky, um, 
I had a really tough time getting those to stick down. Uh, do you have any ideas on how to get some tough materials that you run across uh, that you want to use, how to get it glued down? I mean, do you recommend like rubber cement or oh, something? Yeah. Yeah, really good question. And we haven't brought this up in a while. I know we brought it up, um, gosh, quite a few boxes ago, but there's actually a website for this. <laughs> and it's called, it's, I don't remember the URL exactly. I'll try to find it again. It's like you stick this to that and it's two drop down boxes. And we confirmed last time I brought it up that it does still exist, but you put the thing or the material that you want to stick and then it, and what you want to stick it to. So cloth to paper, and then it tells you the adhesive that you should use. Yeah, this to that.com. Thank you, Patricia. Um, it is so delightful. It has been around for a very long time. Like probably, I remember first finding this website in like 99, 2000. I mean, like early internet, and it still looks that way. And it's just like, so wonderful. Um, I love this website. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing to think about is like, what if it's not adhesive, right? What if I get a needle and thread out and I stitch it on? Um, so that's another thing to think about doing. And um, I love stitching in my art journal because you, then you get the other side where there's this, the thread coming through. So you've kind of already created something on that next page. So good thing to think about. But I love that you saved those wrappers and um, I love that texture with that red paint on there. So really great. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else feel like sharing? I see something on the overhead camera that is incredibly intriguing. So I'm yeah. just going to hand it over to Aaron. Okay, cool. I'm glad we have time for this because I really wanted to show this to you all. Um, so this happened Wednesday. Um, I got to move into the art studios at work where I, where, I, where I work and I got to start unboxing some things. And one of the things I brought there from the studio was a box of weaving. And I had a loom in there, a little table loom that had weaving that I'd started, but the threads that I was using, um, you know, they're, it's hand spun and it's wool and there were some threads that were broken. So I wasn't going to be able to continue with the weaving. Thing. And so I had this, just this little woven piece with mixed um, fibers on it. And for a little while, my coworker and I were thinking, well, maybe it could be like a phone cozy, right? Like a little rug for your phone because it's exactly the right size. And I was like, make a little carpet for my phone. Um, but then I started an open studio session with, with some residents and I had this paper that I was getting ready to make into an art journal. And um, as I was doing that, um, you know, gluing it all together and making the journal, I looked over and saw that little woven piece. And I thought, well, that would be the perfect thing to make the binding for this book with. So I put a little canvas paper on the front and the back and then glued this lovely fiber on. And so now it just like, it feels so good in my hands. Um, and I'm really, really excited to get started in this journal. So I've got like, one page and a little bit extra to do in this book that I've that's been my auxiliary one for right now that I started on the 20 on the 27th of February so as soon as this one's done I'm moving into this journal as my other extra journal um, and I'm really really excited to play with it I'll probably trim these off or maybe wrap them around the inside back cover but it's just so fun I'm a total book nerd so very excited to play with this next one And it's so pretty. Thank you. I'm really excited about it. We have two minutes left. Erin, is there any sort of um, intention you want to set for the next season? Um, anything you want to share? I know that we're going to be doing a lot of um, resist method for the next box. That's no surprise. We've been talking about that for a bit. Um, 
So yeah, whatever you think. Yeah. So I, I think there's a couple things you could do to prepare for the next for the next box. And the first one is to kind of go through your stash, right? Like this is something that I try to do. I know we've had some conversations about this, about like, oh my gosh, I have so many different things. Like, how do I make sense of all of this? So kind of um, here's a box where I have some of the stuff I've been playing with for the past couple of boxes and just going through there and sorting through and saying, okay, this, this is a useful scrap versus I don't know if this other thing is a useful scrap, deciding what things you want to carry over into the next journal, um, starting to source some other things, and then um, getting ready for, uh, for spring, right? So thinking about things like what you want to grow, what you want to bring into your life, what is maybe a seed you want to plant, or... Um, other other things that that you want to bring forward in this next journal so um i'm excited to to see what we can all come up with i'm really really excited for the ephemera um uh yeah i just <laughs> we'll share more in ephemera hour which is coming up soon but um it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a really fun one so i'm i'm thrilled about what's coming to you next I was just going to check my calendar to remind everyone when the ephemera hour is, but I closed out my calendar. Um, I think it is, it's a Wednesday. It's like. Um, the week after that. or next week. If you haven't gone to an ephemera hour um, once a quarter, Aaron and I go on YouTube. We do like a dual YouTube stream and we talk about some of the ephemera that we found um, in our everyday life. So it is a joy and so much fun to play with. Um, and I, and I literally have a gigantic box on my kitchen floor right now because my former professor sent me a giant box of stuff from her studio when she moved her studio from one part of her house to another. Some mm -hmm. of you received some ephemera from her, 12 of you did in a previous box, some collages that had started. She's a life drawing artist. And um, she sent me bonkers stuff, like can't even believe it. So that's that's some of the ephemera I'm excited. People to are sending you ephemera and here I am looking for handouts from people. So we're just... <laughs> the the level of ephemera searching that we're doing is out of this world um so it's march 20th um i believe it's like 8 p.m eastern time on youtube um if you're on the art snacks email list you'll get a notification about it um and then we'll also uh it'll be posted about it on mix so um stay tuned for that um and then uh don't uh Someone just Don't posted forget to, to post your art journal side view images as we finish up these journals. So I'll hold up all of these. These are the ones I've been working on this. Like that's pretty good. Fills up the screen. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. So don't forget to show us the best part of filling a journal, which is looking at that side view. So look forward to seeing those from all of you. Nice. Um, and I'm just noticing in the comments, um, can you say spoiler alert? I don't watch Ephemera Hour until I get the new box because I want to be surprised. Um, yeah, we can totally say spoiler alert. It's good that you don't watch Ephemera Hour because sometimes we talk about the ephemera coming, coming in the box. So we just will keep it hush for some people. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't actually think I'm going to spoil the, the, craziest piece of ephemera and this coming ephemera hour so I won't spoil it okay good <laughs> amazing all right well we're at time for a class today so thank you Erin um for this awesome session thank you everyone for joining us live um again this recording will be posted probably on Monday or Tuesday to the art snacks mix group if you have any questions or anything, you know how to reach Erin on Mix, feel free to message her. Um, and yeah, I'm so excited to see everyone's finished uh, art journals. But in the meantime, 
uh, thank you for spending your Saturday with us. All right. See you all. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Bye. Bye.